Now I'm going to start on the reassembly of the heads. I've got all new intake valves, all new exhaust valves. So I'm going to start with that and I got new, new seals as well. And the installer is a little nylon piece in here, a little straw looking deal that goes over top the end of the, the valve so you can slide the seal over without damaging the seal. And as you can see, this is cleaned up. You can see how nicely these were all lapped in. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these, make sure they lap in good. If they do, we're golden, we'll put it together. Put a little valve grinding compound on the first one. You see how it's perfectly centered on that valve. And you can see how nicely it is in that seat. So I'm gonna to continue to do that. Just like this, little valve grinding compound. 180 out from each other. Push it in. And then use cordless. I'm going to spin it a little bit and all that. We are lapped right in the center of that valve. And that's exactly what I want. And I want it to look the same on that seat where it's right in the center of that seat and have contact all the way around and we do so that means that one's done another one i'll just keep on going Difference in intake and exhaust. Has this little protector. little sleeve over top of the end of your valve then you slide the seal over top of it so you don't cut the valve cut the seal on the sharp part of the valve uh, these are intakes so the blue intake this purple color is exhaust if you don't know which is which you just look at your valve and you see the exhaust is hooked up here so this is an exhaust. Typically your exhaust are smaller anyways. You get a socket that fits these and push them on. Check by this. Okay, 
turn on any tapes. Compressor. It just grabs two legs, squeezes this thing like so. Careful because it will pop out of there. I'll start at the bottom, hold this in, grab the little keepers, two halves. It's two halves like so, and that collar of the valve spring. Basically, you have, I guess, just give you the whole demonstration. So, you have a valve spring, and it takes two halves of these that go into that lock right there, and then it wedges down inside you'd have both of them in there and that's what holds that in there to call valve keepers you have one leg on here that's longer than the other on the tool First head is complete. All the valve stems, all the seals, the springs, the lock ring, the, the retainers, they're all in. Let me get a good look at them. Look back here, do an inspection, make sure not, everything looks okay. 
all looks the same. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll lay a straight edge around, across this. Now, our intake valves are quite a bit bigger, so they obviously can't can't go as far down as far. Uh, so we should see all the exhaust valves touching and all the intakes down about the same amount all the way across. And it looks pretty symmetrical to me. Camera might might play tricks on you guys, but they look good here. So, and this is an actual machined surface for checking the heads. So I'm happy with this, and uh, we'll set this aside, and that's ready to go on. So I noticed in my video as I was editing it that uh, I accidentally put an exhaust seal where an intake goes and an intake where an exhaust goes. So I'm going to go ahead and change that out now. Swap them around. And I'll double check all the other ones as well just to be sure that I didn't do the same thing. See, this is the exhaust right here, and the blue is an intake valve. Now, hopefully, I can get this off without damaging the seal <clears throat> because I have that has that really tight uh, fit around here, and you have a cut. So I'm going to try and put this on. See if I can get that to go. Yeah, there we go. down below that oh yeah perfect okay not a problem now we just got to get that off of there without damaging it just hoping I could pull it but it's a push fit on here I'm gonna grab the glue and plier see if I can wiggle it I have to replace these valve stem seals and I don't have a problem with that but I, yeah I don't think so that come off just fine okay not upset about that at all <clears throat> it's one nice thing about editing or videoing a project I get to look back at some of the mistakes that I make and catch them See what I'm doing here. You know, valve, <clears throat> valve springs are coiled and they're wound one way, so if you try and put your tool on the wrong way it, uh, one leg will grab the other one won't be careful All right. these have oil in them now because I sprayed it all down with WD-40 so <clears throat> they don't want to come out of there get a magnet I want to shake them out man Go and re grab it. I found this by taking a light and shining through the valve and looking at the colors. So I was able to find which one it was. Should give me a little more room to wiggle 
too. So the socket I'm using is actually just on the out, going on the outside edge of this. So the seal fits in there nicely. We're not pushing on anything. It's a nice deep socket. So let's not make this mistake again. The intake is down here. Let's put the valve in. Let's put our protective sleeve on. And we'll put our intake valve up there. Take that off sleeve on here and then our exhaust valve can go verify here this time yeah I'm just happy I found a mistake in the editing um, I mean I probably <clears throat> I'd like to tell you I'd probably look at this with a light four or five times before I actually put the heads together or put them on the, the engine I may have found it but it doesn't matter when you find it just thankful I did find it and more than likely, that's a different type of compound, so it's meant for higher temperatures, I'd imagine. That would have been the difference. Okay, in we go. Thumbs this morning. Okay, pull that out and release it. I was very happy with how all the the valves uh, lapped in. It. it turned out really nice. They're all in good shape there. Things where it should be. Yeah, the valves lap in really nice. So, which I mean, it's not surprising because the the engine ran really well. I gotta tell you, I'm still getting tons of comments of guys telling me it's and that was an over rev. The owner sat on the rev limiter and look, I've known this guy for a very long time, and you know, he's not that guy. If he would have made a mistake and and somehow I don't. You know, a lot of guys said, oh, he downshifted into the wrong gear. Well, it's a turbo 400. Uh, you'd have to explain to me how you could get that thing to downshift into the wrong gear and get the RPMs over 5,800. And the rev limiter is on the engine, in the computer, in the programming. So you'd have to explain that to me because I don't know how that's possible. But I learned one thing about this. This LS deal is there sure are a lot of uh, armchair engineers out there, guys who I could be wrong, but I'm betting there's a lot of them out there that claim to claim to know a whole lot and done this and done that. But you know, just in their their comments, it just um, it's sad they 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 look a lot of them knew so little. I mean, I don't know nothing about these because. This is my first go around, but um, just the things they were saying, um, telling me they rebuilt tons of these motors and then saying some things that, man, they're not even characteristics of this motor, things that that, uh, that don't pertain to this, or even things that they say that you should be able to see by certain details of this engine what it is, and they're just completely, uh, they're just completely off off the board it wasn't even close but you know that's the problem with social media it allows people who don't have experience to pretend to be someone who has or whatever the reality is i don't have any experience with these ls's i'm leaning on 
uh, information from Justin, who's a friend of ours, mess with these all the time, and uh, talked with Sean at Tennessee Coach Works a couple times. And, you know, what I've read. And, you know, I'm not a Chevy guy, but I gotta tell you, I believe this LS base engine is, uh, it's a pretty simple, um, and you guys know how I feel about simple. Simple's reliable. A push rod motor, basic setup, nothing complex, nothing overly complicated, and that's usually why they're reliable. Um, that's why things are reliable. But uh, I, you know, I think everything built today is nowhere near what it used to be years ago. But, uh, and you know, choose what you like. They're all junk, they all break. Choose what you like to work on. Um, I don't have a problem with this, and I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd have a problem doing another one of these in something, which, you know, some of you probably already figured that out, but, um, yeah, so this one's done, and all checked over. Let's get the other one, just to double check again, just to be sure that I got all those correct, so I'll turn it this way so I can check colors, purple, purple. Purple, purple, whatever color that is. And intakes, I'm sure, because I could have screwed something else up there. Intake blue, intake blue, intake blue, and oh, yeah, we're good. Okay, so now that the heads are completely finished and I fixed my my error. Um, this was a driver's or passenger side head. I keep leaving that in there. It, I left this in here not because it matters. These these heads are the same left to right, but. If I had found anything, um, anything in these heads that would lead me to believe something had happened, at least then I would know what cylinder it originally was from instead of, you know, not knowing if uh, this was on the passenger side and this was number one, or on the driver's side and if this was number one, or if it was on the passenger side and it was, you know, number eight. So it was just for reference so that I knew which one was in what orientation in case we found something else. But... Uh, um, we're going to set them aside. I'm going to go ahead and put them in, in these real light trash bags we have. Same thing with the crank and some of the other parts. Um, and I'll cover everything, just keep the dust and dirt off. It's not a final cleaning. Before I go to put this together, they'll get a final hose down, wipe down, make sure everything's 100% clean, and then we'll start assembling. But I'm waiting on parts, and there's another delay, which I'm not sure what part of the video will get posted first, but... Um, there's another delay, something I decided to do. But uh, once we get everything, all our parts, and we have everything, we'll start going together. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna take these and I'll put them in these light uh, plastic bags that we have. They're real real thin, just enough to keep the dirt and crud off of them. And uh, same thing with the, the crank and some of the other parts. And then we'll cover these. And uh, once we get everything, we'll start going together. I also have another motor to throw together um, and I might just be doing that next. I don't know. Uh, I hate to be idle, not getting things accomplished, but I don't want to start something new. Uh, so I'm not certain what we're going to do as of yet, but whatever it is, we'll bring you along. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.